small. What does it mean? Ask a dictionary and you'll get a size that is less than normal or usual. Or worse, insignificant, unimportant. Here's what we think at APSA. Small means community, your neighbor. It means that cup of coffee that you buy from the cafe on your way to work. The suit in the shop window that you promise you'll get one day. It's the family restaurant that you run into to grab lunch or dinner. The haircut you get together with free advice. It's Marillo's Bakery. Because when you look at the big picture, small is huge. And it's why we back small businesses. Play your part and shop local every hashtag Absa Small Biz Friday. And be the me in SME. Let's grow Mzantzik Aufela. Visit absa.co.za to find out how hashtag Absa Small Biz Friday benefits us all. We do more so small businesses can thrive. That's Africanacity. All right, and good afternoon. Uh, happy Small Biz Friday to all our amazing attendees here this afternoon. We're in for a really interesting and exciting and inspirational session. And uh, before I introduce you to our esteemed uh, executive from APSA and our special guest, entrepreneur, Paul, I just want to welcome you, all our attendees this afternoon. And uh, what's happening, of course, what's happening is all about APSA Small Biz Friday and the campaign ahead. And, uh, but before we get there, please, uh, on, on, on the comment box, if you've got any comments or any questions, we're live streaming, any questions on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Instagram, please uh, post them so we can answer them as we move on. But importantly, sometimes we can't get to all the questions, uh, but we will get back to you if that's the case. And uh, again, we hope that you enjoy. And remember, EPSA Small Biz Friday, it's about mobilizing the nation to go big by supporting the small. Because if you and I can support our local small businesses, these small businesses will build infrastructure, employ more from the local communities, meaningful nation building. It's important. As we know, small business, the main sub our economy, is the engine of our society, and it's the future of alleviating unemployment and driving job creation. But this afternoon, it covers all that. So uh, a very big welcome to uh, the absolute executive. Christine Wu, who is the EPSA Managing Executive, RBB, Customer Value Management. Afternoon, Christine, good to see you again. And uh, to Paula Rital, who's our special guest, Entrepreneur Small Business, of uh, Nidakana, welcome aboard. And of Thank course, you. Ryan Baptani, EPSA Managing Executive, Kauteng and Limpopo, who have the pleasure of, of course, engaging with once again. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I want to say personally, thank you for playing such a major role uh, in the Small Business Friday movement, now widely known as EPSA Small Business Friday. A very big welcome to you all this afternoon. Thank you. Afternoon. So what are you, what Good are you afternoon. Do? I'm going to try and be kind to you guys. I've got some amazing questions here this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in a kind of random order and have an interactive, inspirational, and of course, lighthearted uh, discussion. And, uh, and of course, uh, again, to our uh, all our uh, uh, attendees this afternoon, I can see the comments already coming in. I don't know uh, uh, how we're going to move this quickly, but we're going to give it a good shot, that's for sure. Christine, unfortunately, the first question is up for you. Now, EPSA has been on a journey to support SMEs, a, seg a segment that has been particularly hit hard by the pandemic. Why is ses why are SMEs such an important segment for our economy and for EPSA as a bank? Um, so, first of all, I think it's important by acknowledging the importance of SMEs in the South Africa economy. It contributes to almost 50% of our GDP. Um, and um, it is also a segment that is um, very close to my heart. My parents were both entrepreneurs. So I understand, you know, the, 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 the difficulties that small businesses um, go through. And I think especially in the last couple of years, it is a segment that has been um, particularly hard hit, whether it's COVID, rioting, these specific events, um, or whether it's just general failure of infrastructure. It is actually really important to find a way to support 
support small businesses, given that they generally have no access to safety net that big corporates will have. Um, and But at the same time, I think if we're looking at building South Africa, it is also a critical, critical growth engine. And we've seen this internationally. There are uh, many countries that when they put the right emphasis and put the right pre prerequisites in place, the small businesses flourish, the economy takes off. So it is both from a, a personal perspective, but also from an enterprise perspective, it is a very important segment to us. Christine, thank you for that. And uh, to Tato out there, thank you for those kind words. And uh, are you happy to be part of this? And we're really happy to be part of you joining us. Excited to have you. Thank you, Tato. Now, of course, uh, thank you for that, Christine. And now to our special guest, uh, who is an entrepreneur, uh, amazing uh, business owner, uh, Mapula, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your business? My name is Mapula Ratau. Thank you, Mike Anderson. My name is Mapula Ratau. I'm the owner and founder of Lady Kana. Um, I started my business in 2011. Uh, that was when I was still in corporate and uh, I was working for one of uh, the big banks in corporate finance. Um, so I, Lady Kana was born out of the love of looking good because I like fashion. I like looking good because I feel good. You know, when I look good, my confidence just, you know, goes up. So, I what happened is I went to my 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 aunt's funeral. I had this little black hat, and uh, everyone was just like, uh, "Mapolo, where did you get this hat? I want this hat! Wow, this hat, this hat!" And I like I was like, mm, "There is an opportunity here." And by that time, I was not selling hats. And uh, I said to my, myself, "When people ask, I was selling, so I'll be lying." See, yes, I'm selling hats. So by the end of the day, I had about 10 orders of hats. And uh, lucky enough, um, nine of them were coming from Houting and uh, one from Limpopo. And I said to the ones that are coming from Houting, listen, I'll deliver next week. On Monday, I went to the shop where I bought the hat and I said, look, I've got a big order. Can you give me a discount? They agreed. And then from there, that was the birth of Lady Ghana. And I sold. And I saw an opportunity because I love money. Then it was just money inside my pocket. And I was like, wow, wow. If this can happen, then what am I waiting for? Then that was the birth of Lady Ghana. I named Lady Ghana mom my mom was um, a teacher um, she was teaching housecraft that time it was called housecraft and metalwork so she liked fashion and she was always wearing hats and uh, I took after her and I was like the love of hats that's my mom that's me and uh, that's money in extra money in my pocket and um, basically I'm born in a family of entrepreneurs my parents were both teachers. They were, my dad was a lecturer in Bolobani, and my mother was a teacher, as I said, you know, teaching housecraft. But they owned a poultry farm, one of the first big poultry farms in Begasford, um, Mahakala village. So they had, the, they were growing chickens, they had peacocks, they have ducks, they have everything, every bird that you can think of. And they grew uh, vegetables. So I grew up picking up eggs, selling um, chickens. That's all what I knew. Even when I went to boarding school, uh, my dad said, you cannot just be there. And I also felt the need to tell something. So I, I started selling apples and I was doing commercial subjects commercial subjects and uh, my teacher was also like uh, you know motivating us to have extra money and uh, so I grew up having extra money I grew up knowing the importance of money and playing with money so uh, going to the university during holidays my dad used to say you cannot just sit and sell chickens what if 
customers don't come. You must do something with your hands. Mm. Um, can you do something? My sister, Dini, taught me how to crochet. So I made table mats, and I made t-shirts, I made jerseys. I know how to do all those things. I made scarves, and my dad would take those things and sell them to, to Mrs. Ferrun in Vegas. That's one, um, she was one of my dead suppliers. So then the money will come, come. And I was like, wow. So I learned all these techniques and all these business values from my parents. Going to university again, I used to have a friend, Macy Magusela, and we would sell flowers, you know, we'd go and buy uh, dried flowers and make arrangements for our lecturers and we would have extra money. So whoever who knows Mapolo, knows Mapolo, who worked for FNB and was selling Tupperware and AMC, knows Mapolo who worked for Standard Bank and was selling Acha, they just know me selling something. Or knows Mapolo who was selling uh, shawls and blankets from the JSE. So selling was, it's just part of me. I cannot see myself not selling anything. So um, coming back to Lady Ghana, that's how Lady Ghana gave, uh, how, that's how Lady Ghana was born actually. Yeah. And uh, now it is what it is. I registered my company formally in 2014 after retrenched from my previous employer. And uh, I never and you know, when I got the letter of retrenchment, I cried and I was like, there was just this little voice saying, why are you crying? This is the birth of Lady Ghana. It has to work. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. Lady Ghana has to work. I never stopped till today. Lady Ghana is happening through mm -hmm. all the challenges. Um, Yes, I am soldiering on easy. It has never been easy. But there are certain things that just keep me going. The word of God just keep me going. And, um, you know, we saw COVID happening. We saw everything happening. But um, the red flags, even if uh, even before COVID, you know, in 2019, we saw the collapse of Edgar's um, being in retail and being a manufacturer also, I saw sales sliding down and mm. I knew that there was something. And yeah. I always surround myself with the mentors and advisors. And one of my mentors said to me, you know what, retail, there is a problem in retail. You see Edgar's, learn from Edgar's. Strengthen your online store. Uh, be, be active on social media. And I took all that and um, I had an online store and um, mm -hmm. it was happening. I became active on social media. Till today, I'm still active and it is happening. If I don't advertise anything, nothing is happening if i put we get you orders all the time that was the birth of lady ghana it is happening and i am very grateful to be part of absa small business friday <laughs> well, that's a great story inspirational story <laughs> and you know, it's, uh, it's not easy out there and you're getting a wonderful comments on our comments and to all our people out there i just can't keep up with you i apologize but we're truly grateful for your input and uh, so the point what I'm trying to say here, yeah, dress for success. And if you want to succeed and build confidence, go and talk to my boy. I have said great, great things about your business and, uh, and from a number of people. So uh, a great story. And I don't believe you've started yet. I think you're just going to go on to achieve huge greatness in your life. And you've done that already anyway, but you're going to continue. I write a book every year under the banner, Never Surrender. And the famous quote there, if you keep moving, you never give up. You'll always arrive at where you want to be. And uh, You've certainly done that. Congratulations to you. Great story. 
All right. You know, Ronnie, I didn't leave you last <laughs> on purpose. Uh, they just told me to leave the guy uh, last and let the ladies have a chance before you. Ronnie, it's good to see you again. And uh, we've engaged before. Now, Ronnie, there's a lot of innovation uh, in the banking space at the moment. And there seemed to be a drive to offer low-cost digital banking. How has EPSA's yeah. SME solutions evolved over the past two years? Thanks, thanks, Mark, for, for that question. And, and firstly, um, thank you to all the viewers who are you know tuning in different channels that we've created um, you know for this platform today. And we say APSA, you know, small business Friday, and uh, that's why we're here. So so really, I mean, in the last two years, Mike, um, you know, to 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 us as a bank, we've been hard at work uh, putting money back into the SME in our hands, and I think. You know, when, with our business evolve solution that we have, uh, you know, put into the market as a transactional, you know, value, uh, we've uh, become very creative in terms of our innovation, in terms of product enhancement, and and making sure that we 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 eliminate some of the monies that uh, you know go in different environment from a small medium enterprise, as you've had, you know, from uh, Mapula around, uh, you know. Um, uh, keeping money into their into their own base, and we are giving money by by really doing that. And we've created an account that is integrated and fully embedded with uh, a cash flow. And um, generally, SMEs will pay a bookkeeper uh, between three thousand or five thousand rand a month uh, just to run the books on a monthly basis. You know, to just keep in check, you know, controls in terms of money flow. And we've created that and uh, built it in um, as a value add in terms of uh, you know that product. And and for those customers that are attending over five million and less, they don't have to pay for that. And 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 it's something that we're giving it back to 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 our to our customers. We we didn't stop there. We then added a value add in terms of uh, you know a SARS report, which uh, which also give a vet report. And that allows them to to claim, uh, you know, VAT on a monthly basis and to do a proper accounting work, and that's also built into the into the accounting package that we've actually put in for for the SME. Again, um, you know, as we know, the South African Revenue Services is a very heavy compliant environment, and for an SME to have that through a banking platform is actually an advantage. Uh, but Mike, and I, I want to say that we didn't. Uh, a stop from that and we, we we carried on and really you know put uh, the payment uh, options for for our customers we, we you know that we've launched apple pay we we've also you know integrated uh, in terms of uh, the ability to allow you know the mobile to be a point of sale device and and that has really digitized the platform in terms of how our sme you know, um, drive their payment, uh, you know, um, and collection, because that is very important, as, as you've heard earlier on from our guest, uh, and, you know, collecting money and making sure that you are being paid, it's key. And uh, today, you know, cash is not really what people are actually driving. So so we've created, again, a point of sale device to be, to be, to be utilized as a, I mean, a cell phone to be utilized as a, as a point of sale device. And there's many innovations that we are, we are evolving. And this account, as we call it, uh, you know, a business evolve account, uh, evolves with you over time. The more you grow, uh, the more we put in uh, features in terms of understanding where, where you are. And the fact that you can bank from day one without any fee really, really gives you the power to really be in the mainstream banking and participate and have all the embedded integration that we've actually built for our customers. So, so we're very excited and we're inviting most of our, uh, our customers to really test that and, and, and take it up. And we, we, we have uh, seen a big growth in that in the past uh, two years. 80% of our take up in terms of transactional value uh, and digital uh, solution came from this business evolved custom uh, uh, account, and we we invite our customers to really uh, take it up and go to our APSA environment and take it up for, for, for us. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Ronnie, absolutely. You know, I always say you, know, you can't build your castle if you don't build a foundation around compliance, financial compliance. 
and uh, you know it's, it's such a crucial role and i think too many smes out there on taking care of the uh the accounting the, the capital management and knowing the numbers you know i say i, I do a lot of talks around that know the number How, who do you have money to who has money to you what's in your bank account you know and these mm. are the kind of key elements you know i'm personally with private bank and my company's with absa and, and uh, i've been close to the innovation behind absa over the past two years and that's pretty much why you've made so much money over the last year is because uh, of, of what you've done well you know so big congratulations to you guys and what absa has done i've been close to it and I, I, I welcome it now christine coming back to you christine now, why did APSA become the title sponsor of Small Business Friday this year, now widely known as APSA Small Business Friday? And can you tell us more about this campaign? We're so excited, by the way. Um, so, so am I. And um, Mike, I think it's important to start off by saying that we are hoping that this is not just a campaign and that this become really a, a strong national movement. Um, but let me take a step back. I think when we uh, started looking at um, how do we step up our support to the SME segment, uh, one of the things that was very clear to us is about reigniting our passion to support uh, local businesses. But at the same time, it was also quite important for us to make it tangible. It can't just be empty slogans on a, on a billboard, on some pamphlets, say shop local. Talk is cheap. So, you know, how do we actually put money where our mouth is? Um, and, and that's where, um, you know, we decided to partner um, with NSBC to, to, to launch the app uh, Small Biz Friday. And essentially, it is actually also a rewards program. Um, you know, so, so we are looking um, at, um, you know, just giving double cash back to all our cardholders when they are shopping at participating merchants. Every Friday, double cash back. And at the same time, we are also giving cash back to the merchants uh, for, for those transactions. And um, and lastly, I think it's also important to just uh, let everyone know that this is a program that is completely free. So, so it's really about encouraging, um, supporting locals, drawing attention to it, but at the same time, also just really putting um, you know, real tangible value behind it. Um, and, and, and I think it's something that we are extremely excited about. Well, Christine, I know personally, and you know, the NSPC team does. I mean, what you do is meaningful, and, and I mean, the comments are coming through, and as you'll see, uh, is incredible. So, so thank you for that. And you, you are doing what it's right out there, and you've understood it. You're passionate about the SME sector. I know that. So, uh, thank you for what you, you're doing and what you're going to do. And, uh, Mapola, back to you. What does this movement mean for your business? Uh, Mike, thank you for that. This movement, small, the Small Business Friday, means a lot to me. It um, it increases my, you know, as small businesses, we 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 face challenges in terms of marketing and uh, advertising our businesses. So APSA just walks the top, you know, like uh, it's putting our businesses the brand awareness, you know, and uh, this is free marketing. And uh, I love it when people come to my store and swipe, you know, with their APSA cards and getting rewards. And uh, again, also, it gives me business opportunities. You know, marketing, you will never know who is looking, who is eyeing me, who is eyeing Lady Ghana. And uh, it is because of APSA, APSA small businesses. And uh, also, you know, it's rewards on top of rewards. It's, uh, it give, it's giving my brand, uh, you know, an opportunity to be seen. Also, my customers to get cash back in their pockets and uh, also access to markets. So that is what I love about APSA, supporting small businesses and putting small businesses out there in terms of their marketing uh, initiatives. Good words, my Paul. You're inspiring many out there. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, Ronnie, what are some of the benefits for SMEs when using apps and merchant devices for the apps of Small Business Friday? <laughs> so, so Mike, uh, my Paul speaks about uh, reward after reward. Uh, I have more reward here. So, so really on a Friday and, and that's uh, uh, what we have done is to is to really try to 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 increase and drive the volume on, on our merchant uh, that are primarily banked by us and and assist the merchant to keep their core base 
uh, by accepting payments at a very, very low cost. And we, we, we have really done this in a very competitive, uh, you know, rate, um, you know, at 2.5%, which is very low. Again, reward after reward, taking money back into the hands of the SME. And we're taking it, uh, you know, step further that we, we allow the small business, uh, you know, the Friday to create an environment uh, for them to, to, to advertise, advertise their, their product and promoting their businesses through different channels that we've actually created. Um, you know, in Above the Line, in radio and billboards, we've actually put uh, a platform such as webinars. Uh, we, we, we are exposing um, people from Apollo to, to the SME business detail um, and on our APSA platform. And, and, and on top of that, we reward uh, by, by giving the merchants uh, 400 uh, rebate for accepting payments through, through any of our APSA terminals on, on Friday. But we don't stop there because we continue uh, not penalizing from re re receiving deep, uh, any rebates that are coming from cards that are not, uh, you know, upsa, upsa, upsidized. So, so what it means is that, Mike, we are putting money back into the pockets of the SME. We are creating volumes and driving traffic to them into our own space uh, uh, by inviting people to, to get rewards. And also the APSA card holder who's swiping at Mapola's uh, uh, business uh, will also be rewarded. So it's uh, reward after reward, and and that's 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 an intent of us in terms of really banking our small medium enterprise. Yeah, thanks, thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie. Again, looking at the comments, uh, amazing, uh, incredible opportunity, Zelda, awesome campaign, Corne. Thank you, Absa, to Mela, uh, um, Tracy, uh, great. I can't keep up, but thank you, guys. Keep the comments coming. We really enjoy it. It inspires the team. Uh, it elevates the movement, and uh, thank you for those comments. Uh, really awesome. All right, uh, Christine, back to you, Christine. APSA Small Business Friday is not only about SMEs. You also want to encourage individuals to get involved. Why is that so important? So, Mike, the, the, the name of the campaign actually at APSA is called Finding the Me in SME. And I do think it is actually about, you know, making sure that we all play our role in um, identifying the local businesses that we want to support and actually go out um, and, and, and actually proactively uh, spending the money with them. However, I think what is even more important is that from Axis perspective, uh, one of the things that we uh, wanted to do through this uh, campaign is to actually create an ecosystem. So um, some of you may know that EFSA is the largest card issuing uh, you know, business in South Africa. So we've got the largest card holder base in South Africa. And um, to the challenge that was uh, that Makulo mentioned earlier, uh, many small businesses actually struggle with access to market. And what better way to actually give them access to market by allowing them, by creating this rewards mechanism to give them access um, to the largest card base uh, in South Africa. So, so that's why, um, you know, we wanted to really use this as a way to create this ecosystem. But more importantly, I think it's to remind all of us there's a me in SME. It's not just the small businesses that's the me, it's also us, the consumers, that are the me in SME. Absolutely, Christine. Yeah, you know, we always mobilize the words, you know, uh, to, 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 to the consumer out there, you know, change the mindset. Go out and support your local small business every day. Encourage your family, encourage your friends. Uh, go out and support that mom and pop store. It's so crucial to our economy, to our country, and to our growth. And, uh, and I think this, this initiative is really playing a major part, not to think we know it's playing a major part in, of course, encouraging the mindset change to go out there and support the small. Small business is big business. All right, Mapola, what practical tips uh, can you give to business people like yourself out there? Uh, the tip that I can give to my fellow small businesses is keep the faith, keep the faith and uh, become, become because this is a long journey. Um, don't look, you know, don't look sideways. Keep your lane, have faith, pray more, and um, change your mindset. Don't let any negative thing to cloud your mind. Keep the faith, pray, the answers are in the Bible. 
God is there to help us. There are so many promises in the Bible that keeps me going every day. You know, God is there to, crawl, to, to help us cross the River Jordan. You know, yeah. I like it when it says, um, uh, go there, be confident, be determined, do not be afraid of anything, do not be anxious. God is there to help you. And uh, let us go there. You know, being an entrepreneur is very lonely and very sensitive. It will calm you down. It will make you, um, what is the word? It will make you, uh, <laughs> what can I say? It will just make you like, a, you know, be easy, be easy minded. Think positively all the time. Do not be anxious. Just keep the walk, keep the faith. And uh, we've got the likes of APSA to help us. We've got the help us here. So I would urge also small businesses to register with APSA, to open mm -hmm. accounts with APSA and be mm -hmm. part of the small businesses. Some lady once told me, Mapolo, you are in business. I said, yes, do you have an APSA account? I said, no. She said, you better open an account with APSA. There are opportunities there. APSA is one of the banks that help small businesses. Do it, you'll see. Mm -hmm. And ever since I have opened an account with APSA, I have seen miracles. Mm -hmm. It is happening. Mm -hmm. This bank is taking care of small businesses. So I would urge my fellow entrepreneurs to open accounts with APSA. APSA supports small businesses. I have been doing um, virtual what is that? Mm. Virtual exhibitions with APSA. I have been on NCA with APSA. Now I'm on Small Business Friday with APSA. It's just amazing the support that we're getting from this bank. It works the top. Thank you. Yeah. Now, to both your comments, I'm going to open an APSA business account definitely. This is amazing. Thank you, Deboho. All right, Ronnie, you know, a devastating, uh, a, a, a absolute tragedy. The floods in KZN have caused significant devastation. Various corporates have announced that they would be supporting humanitarian relief and rebuilding efforts in the province. As APSA are there, specific, pro specific projects or initiatives that will be prioritized to support KZN? Mike, uh, firstly, I just want to say that um, we were extremely touched uh, as a bank. As you know, we have our colleagues um, in KZN and not only our colleagues, but our customers uh, bought on a business um, as well as, uh, you know, in the in the commercial space and and some of our big corporates as well. So so we we, we took a decision to to really create a, a relief fund um and uh, you know we put aside uh, 10 million that uh, goes into the community um uh, that was uh, driven through non-profit organizations that we 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 have history and working with um we collaborated with the different uh, agencies in wazulu natal and making sure that uh, we provide uh, uh, some some aid and donated hot meals food parcels and, and some of the hygiene items, especially in areas that were hit hard. We also went and donated basic social infrastructure support uh, for the rebuilding of other, you know, essential services like clinics, uh, schools. Um, we, we had water uh, issues in, in Guazulu Natal. And in that first week, the bank, uh, you know, provided and supported the province in terms of uh, dispatching water tankers in key areas that uh, we felt um, need that at that time and we realized that hospitals as well as community health centers were really impacted and we deployed that and uh, we also have employees who work and, and reside in the province so they were also you know impacted heavily and we set aside a further two million rent uh, for colleague support to provide water and care packs containing you know essential you know uh, items because we have colleagues 
in all the areas that um, you know you you saw uh, being shown on TV and all the media platforms that uh, um, you know colleagues could not be able to be mobilized and go and and save his uh, you know our customers and our small medium you know customers. So we we are really committed to be there in every step of the way, and um, you know for our colleagues and also you know for the province. Uh, we work very well with the province of KwaZulu Natal. And um, we continue with our commitment to be uh, that really, you know, force for good for 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 the society. And 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 as hard as it was, I mean, there's not a, enough money, uh, you know, Mark, that can actually change the situation that we have seen there. But we took a decision that as much as possible for what we have, let us go and uh, you know deploy resources and make sure that uh, uh, we rebuild, you know, KZN together. We've also uh, waive, um, you know, insurance uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, the excesses that uh, you know you always uh, pay when you claim. We did that, uh, you know. Um, I think we we the first band to really go very boldly into the province and say that uh, for anyone who's going to claim under the APSA insurance, we're not going to pay any excess um, from the situation that happened in KwaZulu Natal, which is also. A serious financial relief you know from our side but we continue working there and we're gonna rebuild the the province together uh, we're gonna you know keep uh, the customers very close to us so that we understand exactly where they are and be able to help them in this period uh, but more importantly also help the community so we are doing a whole lot on the ground thanks man no, Ronnie, thank you. You know, I just hope other uh, major organizations can follow your example because, you know, without that kind of help, that needed help, you know, we're not going to make a dent in this uh, uh, tragedy. So so thank you for setting the pace, Ronnie, uh, and to Absa, we really appreciate that. And, of course, uh, Stacey says, this is an incredible initiative. Thank you for changing lives. And of course, Anati, it's great to see you on the platform. Congratulates Absa on this partnership. So let's move on to the next question. I can't keep up, uh, Ronnie, with all these uh, amazing comments. I'm going to try and get them all <laughs> recorded and send them to us. All right. Uh, Christine, back to you, Christine. What are some of the factors to consider when launching a marketing campaign like Apps of Small Business Friday? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, I think um, for, for us, it's more than just a marketing campaign. Um, and, and that was really important because um, if this is just about marketing, then I think it would be felt, you know, as inauthentic. But I think, you know, uh, also our colleagues are holding us accountable on this. You know, they are actually saying, guys, we really need to do something. We really need to give value back. Um, so, so that's why, you know, for us, a couple of factors that goes into, um, you know, really thinking through this. Like I said, first of all, it's about tangible value. The second thing is also about, you know, how do we leverage as the strength? And, and that's why, you know, it's about creating this ecosystem because we are the largest card issuing, um, you know, bank as well as the largest merchant acquirer. So that's why it, it is incredible power by bringing these two parties together and creating this ecosystem. But I think most importantly, um, you know, it's, it's also a, a, a matter of brand. Um, it, we're going back to what EPSA is great at. Um, you know, historically, and that's about supporting the community. It's about connecting with the community. And I think, you know, there's obviously a lot of discussions about being more digital and there are fancy ways and digital ways of managing your, your business and managing payment. But at the end of the day, it's about human being. So it's about connecting to the community. And, and I think that's sort of what um, we hope this campaign, this, this, this initiative is going to embody. Um, so, yeah, so, so you know, just a couple of things that sort of went into the thought process. Yeah. Christine, 100 percent, you know, it's more than a, a campaign, you know, for, for almost 14 years now. It's been a movement, Small Business Friday, and now with Epsa Small Business Friday, the movement will continue. And yes, there will be many campaigns within the movement, but uh, the movement is what it is. It's an unselfish way of positioning it. And then, of course, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's the meaning that the forms behind the, the be behind the movement and, and what it can do for our country and so uh, uh, Christine you're hundred percent right but Paula how can how, how can you define sorry how can our audience find you on social media I'm so excited I can't get the words out properly <laughs> they can follow Lady Ka now on Instagram 
So it's our Instagram handle is at Lady Ghana. Lady Ghana spells L E D I K A N A. So they can follow us on Instagram, they can follow us on Facebook, and they can order um, on our from our online store www.ladygana.com. And they are most welcome to go to Lady Ghana Uartambo to swipe and buy a lot of items uh, for Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day on Sunday. So yeah. go there, get your Afrocentric garments, you know, uh, gifting, Afrocentric gifting, Afrocentric garments, beautiful for your loved ones for your mother for your granny for your wife for your girlfriend go and swipe <laughs> and get more rewards today and uh, more cash in your bank account thank you well, paul that was my last question to you and i want to say uh, you know beautiful story inspirational you've inspired many this afternoon and uh, i wish you all the success on a continued successful journey and uh, stay close to us uh, we will follow you and uh, thank you for being part of our uh, panel this afternoon your insights have been invaluable and uh, well received by our audience out there thank you Michael. thank you Mike. christine my last question to you christine uh, from a brand perspective do you believe that this this movement uh, will set you apart from the rest Absolutely. I do think um, it speaks to our commitment to the segment. And um, it is more than just a, you know, sort of a once off marketing campaign. It is a constant, a consistent set of commitments, whether it's our support in the regions, whether it's this specific um, initiative in collaboration with NSBC, whether it's our proposition. It all looks at what are the small business pain points that we need to try and solve and um, you know and, and really make sure that we put our resources to bear and I just wanted to maybe add one other thing I saw in one of the questions there were questions around so how does an, an, an enterprise like uh, APSA support small businesses when it comes to if you want to do business with APSA you know um, do we only work with the large corporate absolutely not um, and I think in this regard, you know, obviously from a bank perspective, there are also very stringent requirements when it comes to uh, credential and, and governance. But at the same time, having acknowledged the importance of building local enterprises, there are actually specific initiatives that looks at, you know, given the APSA array of spend, you know, we have a very systemic way of identifying the spend categories where we can actually proactively support small businesses. And those are very important considerations as part of the way we think about procuring uh, goods and services. Um, and, and, you know, and, and that's actually, um, you know, it could almost be a dedicated, uh, you know, topic to, to, to cover at um, one of the future sessions but a lot of effort goes into how do we actually use our procurement spend in supporting local business so you know so what we shouldn't try and think about is this is try to support the brand in in isolation you know brand ultimate is built when we actually consistently through everything we do um you know sort of uh, with, with a set of aligned uh, set of values and that needs to come through and that value is about supporting local businesses it's about supporting the community and that you can see consistently whether it's our proposition the way we do procurement the way we support the businesses when you know when times get tough um as well as in this instance uh, small business friday christine thank you very much for being part of the panel your insights are invaluable uh, thank you for your personal passion and commitment to the SME sector. Without people like you, we can't do what we do. And uh, we certainly look forward to a long and fruitful journey. Uh, a big thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Now, Ronnie, again, unfortunately, you lost, but uh, not intentional. Ronnie, uh, how can our listeners find out more about this movement? Yeah, I think, Mike, before I say where the, the, the viewers and the, our customers out there must, must go, uh, I just want to say that uh, we are seriously committed to participate and contribute to the small, medium enterprise in the country. And uh, our intention is very clear. We're giving back a, a lot into the hands of our SMEs so that they are sustainable over time. And I would like to invite them to visit us in our uh, online, which is uh, apsa.co.za. 
and also in all our branches that we have close to about 700 of them in the country and uh, really you know go in there and ask uh, our colleagues uh, that are down there in the in the in the in the, in the branches uh, in our suits uh, in, in all the parts of the country and and, and support us and, and support the small uh, bees friday and support our small business customers and and and, and they will get reward, they will be rewarded and you will see uh, that uh, uh, we're giving money back into the hands of our, our customers so thank you so much for this opportunity really appreciate ronnie thank you for those words as always you know inspiration is there your passion like christine is there and, you know, as you and Christine, part of the executive of ABSA, you've made this all happen. Thank you for partnering with the NSPC. Uh, we know that we're collectively going to make a massive difference. We can see from the comments, they're absolutely overwhelming. Uh, we are grateful for these comments because, of course, it's because of our listeners. We can also do what we do. And uh, so, Ronnie, thank you very much. And to the panel, thank you very much. We're, we're grateful. It's been a wonderful afternoon. To all our attendees out there, don't forget to go out there and support the small. It's the main of our economy. It's the future of our society. Uh, please encourage people around you to go out there and do the same. And uh, follow the movement, EBSA Small Biz Friday. Uh, if you need to get in touch with us at the NSPC, you know who we are, you know where we are. So to all our attendees out there, thank you for being part of this amazing afternoon. We're truly grateful and uh, have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you back shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Small. What does it mean? Ask a dictionary and you'll get a size that is less than normal or usual. Or worse, insignificant, unimportant. Here's what we think at APSA. Small means community, your neighbour. It means that cup of coffee that you buy from the cafe on your way to work. The suit in the shop window that you promise you'll get one day. It's the family restaurant that you run into to grab lunch or dinner. The haircut you get together with free advice. It's Marillo's Bakery. Because when you look at the big picture, small is huge. And it's why we back small businesses. Play your part and shop local every hashtag Absa Small Biz Friday. And be the me in SME. Let's grow Mzantzik Aufela. Visit absa.co.za to find out how hashtag Absa Small Biz Friday benefits us all. We do more so small businesses can thrive. That's Africanacity.